It's challenging enough to deal with bullying and incivility by your coworkers, but what if that abuse is actually coming from your patients or their family members? You know, you've dedicated your life to serving them, but what if they are the bullies? On this episode of Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying, we're going to talk about how to address patient and family abuse. I'm Dr. Renee Thompson, CEO and founder of the Healthy Workforce Institute. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations about Nurse Bullying. It is so, so sad that we even have to talk about this, but we do. Violence towards healthcare professionals is on the rise. And so often we just dismiss the abuse by saying things like, well, they're not cognitively intact or they have cancer. Or maybe it was they were the, the parents were just told that their precious child has a brain tumor and that he won't survive. I mean, I get it. We have such empathy and compassion for others. That's why we're nurses. However, there is no justification for cruelty. I mean, none. The good news is that there are strategies that can help minimize and address this problem. So in addition to what your organization is I'm sure already doing at that system level to mitigate the risks to you, here are just three things that you and your colleagues can do in your department. First of all, if you're exposed to any type of abuse from a patient or their family member, please warn everybody else. Physical violence is almost always preceded by verbal violence. So if your patient starts yelling or throwing obscenities at you, make sure you warn your coworkers and perhaps let your boss know. You can also include patient and family behavior in your report to the next shift so that you can warn them, hey, this guy is starting to get, you know, a little anxious and he's starting to curse, but include it in your report. Also, let the patient's physicians or their providers know about their behavior. It's important that they know too. Then warn any therapists, phlebotomists, dietary aides. Like give them a warning that this patient is starting to escalate their behavior. Number two, set clear boundaries on what you're willing to tolerate. You know, the moment your patient starts getting testy with you, set those boundaries right away. And my favorite way to do this is to use the word willing. Mr. Rossi, I am willing to fill in the blank as long as you are willing to speak to me in a respectful manner. That means, because sometimes you've got to spell it out, no yelling, cursing, or threatening me. Okay? So immediately set that boundary. Number three, Report it and get the help that you need. Now, I'm not a huge fan of that whole recommendation to report everything, just like I'm not a fan of that zero tolerance for all bad behavior. I mean, you can't have zero tolerance for everything, like eye rolling, okay? Nobody would be employed. But you have to be smart about this. So get together as a team your entire department. Make a list of all of the different ways patients and their families abuse you. And then just pick three that you all agree you will report no matter what. And if someone is being abusive, get some help. Ask a charge nurse, your boss, an educator, and if need be, ask security to come with you when you go back into that room. And say this, we take threats or use of profanity or you know any whatever they're doing very seriously and if you're not willing to behave in a respectful manner we will no longer be willing to care for you okay and actually that conversation might be best coming from their physician or from your boss let your leadership team handle it 
the key is just don't accept it as part of the job. Well, that's just the way it is here. We've got to start identifying those patients who may be escalating because what we want to do is intervene before it gets to the point where they're violent. This is such a big deal right now. I'd love to read any of the comments um, that you have about this issue, maybe what you're doing in your workplace to try to keep everyone safe. Just go ahead and type them into the comment section below. And of course, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and share this with any of your coworkers who might need the extra support. And of course, Make sure you hop on over to our website, healthyworkforceinstitute.com, for more great resources. So until our next conversation, be kind, take care, and stay connected.